We got new merch to let you know. Thank you, guys. Get the Rat Life shorts in blue, salmon and sand. We've also got the new tie-dye, B-G-T-Y. Be good to yourself, teas and aqua, creamsicle, and indigo. Get that and more only at theovonstore.com. Um, all right. Hmm. And sometimes when I don't have any lotion, you know, I will, um, I'll spit on my hands and rub it on my arms. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know why I do that. I think that is, I don't know what that is, but I don't, that's just, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you everything. I, um, yeah, I eat half, I eat half of a butterscotch that I found in my truck earlier. And, um, yeah. And I don't know why I did it, but I did it. It's just, that's the kind of stuff I'm doing, I guess. And, um, anyway, sorry, we are, we are good to see you. We are here. Happy September. Can you believe it? Or Sontombre, as they say in somewhere else. Um, sorry, my brain is all over the place, uh, and that's okay. That's all right. It's that time of, you know, it's that time of year, you know, the heat has gotten to people, the heat. I mean, it is, it is, this is when summer, this is that encore when summer's like, okay, you don't think I'm going to ball out? Watch me whip, watch me nay nay. This is when summer do that thing, you know, get sturdy. I mean, it is, this is about hot as it can get. It, 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 and with Labor Day, you see people, you know, people at Labor Day, they're trying to do grilling. They're trying to grill. But man, this is the time of the sun say, hey, don't, a grill won't even start up because it can't compete with a sun. A microwave won't start up. A match won't strike. They say, nah, nah. Come on, man. How you expect me to compete with this boss man? With this Suge night in the sky up there? The sun is just, it's like that. This is its week. The rest of the year is weather, right? But this is that time where it is the sun. And and I'll say this, you know, um, White people don't get enough credit for having to deal with the sun. White people, yeah, white people don't get enough credit for having to deal with the sun, man. They, you know, it, it, put, put a white in the sun. Put a white in the sun and look what happens to them. Let's don't pretend like we don't know what happens to a white in the sun. Put an Irish on a beach. My God, you better pray for him. Let's don't pretend that the sun don't like black people better. I look, I think the sun is recruiting black people, man. It's trying to transition folks. It's trying to make more blacks and browns and semi-browns and off-browns. Do, put a white in the sun for 30 hours and now make him walk down the interstate. He, he keep pretty browned up at that point. See if somebody don't pull over and give him a Nelly CD or cornrow his hair up. I'm just saying, baby, the sun, the sun be making, it make, the sun be making more black people, man. That's the truth. Or it's trying to. Put a Swedish person in the sun for 40 hours. And let him apply for a, a home loan. Okay, what's up? That's what I'm saying, man. That's the sun be doing like that. And that's just what is this the time of year it is when the sun, this is its boss. The sun is him right now. Um, yeah, we got a lot in this episode, man. We got a lot we're going to get into. We're talking, uh, well, that, you know, that reminds me, um, when I was in school, you know, and you had to build that solar system, baby. Remember that? 
it was maybe third grade or fourth grade. You had to build that solar system with your, like a mo, you had to make a mobile with the different planets hanging on it and that. And the rich kids, they had, they came, their mom, if you had a dad, first of all, then if your dad had a job and your mom didn't have to work, then your mom had a car with a hatchback, right? And the rich kids, you know, Zachary or uh, Abigail, they would come to the school and they had um, their mom, their, they would, the, their mom would open the hatchback and get their, uh, their solar system out. And you'd see all the planets on it made out of a little styrofoam ball and everything. And, oh, it's cute to say their name on the side. Zachary, Abigail. Now, if you was over by us, bro, if you had to ride the poor bus, bro, you had to get your, first you had to build your shit, bro. Mom wouldn't help, mom, you ain't had no hot glue gun. You was doing your thing, you had to do it yourself, right? That's how you had to do it. I remember my solar system, that bitch had a, uh orange in the middle, bro, and I put it in the uh, microwave th- for like 30 seconds to warm it up to give it that that sun mentality, you know? So I heated that bit, put it in the middle, and then I hung whatever I could for the other things, bro. I had me a cherry tomato on there. I had me a, a part of a mitten. Uh, what else? I had a closings pan. Um, I had a butterscotch. And what else was on mine? Maybe a marshmallow and a thing of tweezers that I had found in mom's room. And that was my solar system, baby. And I And you had to get on the bus, bro. That was the problem. And on the bus, people, some people, they didn't have their, their, theirs made, the other children. So they had some lurkers on there. Like Daniel, you know, Daniel, he, he steal four Jupiters on the bus, bro. He'll roll off the bus with a half a pocket full of Jupiters, dog. And that was his, uh, presentation. And Gerald, damn, I remember, oh man, we had this one fella, in our class, Gerald, bro, and he, you know, he didn't have a lot of brain in him. He wasn't real, he wasn't that real, that brain dog, you know? And he had, his solar system had, I remember it had Earth and Alaska. That was the two planets, bro. That bitch had Earth and Alaska. And one night, I remember we was at a camp out or something, and I remember looking up at the sky with him, and he, he he we were looking at the moon and he he said, "Hey man, you think you think we'll ever land on Alaska?" And I just patted him on the back a little extra. You know, cuz sometimes some folk need that extra patting, bro. And that's what he needed a couple extra pats on the back, baby, but that's what God's doing, man. What I'm saying is we all have different universes. You know, we all got different, we all got different universes. Um, Welcome to the episode. Thank you guys for being uh, a part of my life um, and let me be a part of your life. What's going on? Uh, We got a unique episode. We have, um, we're going to get to some calls. We have the Gator boys. Some of them boys, they, they, they nabbed that Gator over there in Mississippi. They nabbed one. I mean, just one of them big daddies. This thing big, boy. This thing big. This thing won't fit in a condom. You know what I'm saying? This thing's big. So they nabbed it, and uh, we're gonna talk to one of those guys. Um, we had some finance. We had a fr- we was a victim of a fraud. We're gonna talk about that. Um, and what else can we talk about? Got a lot of great calls. Um, what else? I've been I've been feeling a lot, man. I've been I've been having a tough. T- I've been feeling like everything's got to be perfect, man. I've been feeling like you know it's like I come to even just come into podcasts like I feel all right, I got to be every you know everything. Ha- it's like or just every day every life's like man everything is just like I it just it just uh, and sometimes it builds up. It's like and I don't even notice it's going on. Um. 
But it, yeah, it, but that's not the truth. And I just, sometimes I let it build up and be the truth or it's, it's just, I can't explain it, but it starts happening in the background. Like everything's got to be perfect, you know? Uh, so yeah, I just want to call that out on myself and just think, you know, like I can't make things, I can't be perfect. I can't make everything perfect. Um, Yeah. So it just, I can't, you know, uh, and nobody's asking me to really. It's like, it's this, it's like this self fulfilling, like, or not a self unfulfilling prophecy. You know, it's like, uh, it, it's a ridiculous pressure. It goes back to when I it probably associates to when I was young, you know, um, and I felt like if I wasn't perfect, then uh, I wouldn't be cared about, you know. Um, or the only way I had a chance, it was like, you know, I, I wasn't getting when I was, I don't know. I'm not trying to get into all that kind of stuff. But it was like, what I guess, it's like if I was, if, it was like, I guess I felt like if I'm not, if I don't, the only way I have a chance to get the, what I need in the world is if I'm perfect. Because I wasn't getting what I needed. So it was like, man, if I, I guess the only way I can, that I even have a chance, I must, I must have to be perfect to get the care I need, you know? Or maybe if I'm perfect, maybe if I'm perfect, Then I then I will have to be cared about, you know, because no, how no somebody couldn't not care about something that's perfect, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm perfect or anything. I'm just saying that's an old thing that would be in my head, man. And it's not even a thought that I had or created. It was like a survival thing that happened when I was young, and um, and I could see how a kid could think that. You know, a kid could think that. So, uh, but yeah, sometimes that flares up and I'm like, man, if I'm not perfect, then, uh, people are, people are not going to like me, you know, if I'm on, if I'm real honest about it. Um, and I know that isn't true. I know that's not true of like my friend, I like as an, as an adult now, I know that's not the truth. But it still doesn't stop those old feelings from uh, they kind of take over the they kind of uh, hijack the mainframe sometimes. And I get stuck in that space and I don't even realize it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I just want to share. I just want to call that out to myself and and just say, yeah, man, you don't have to be you. You are oh, you're fine. You're okay, brother. You know, and um, yeah, I just want to call that out to myself because that's important to me uh, to notice. And I'm grateful now that I can even notice when that happens sometimes so that I'm not just sitting there and just being a victim of it. Um, we have some really nice calls, some really nice stuff, and um uh, grateful to be here with you guys um well i got this call that came in right here let's just let's let's hear this daddy real fast and see what this cat has to say here because i know what's up you little love muffin i just heard your podcast and it's about time coming to north cackalack i live 20 minutes away from winston-salem and i'm so fucking excited bro Gang, gang, homie. Gang, baby, yeah, and that's a, that'll just lead us right into the tour dates. That's what I want to tell you. We have some new ones, and uh, man, some really exciting stuff. Um, yeah, we just got back from Canada. I'm going to talk about that in a second, but I want to let you know that uh, we have live now Norfolk, VA, uh, Roanoke, VA, and that's where I think um, I think that's where the Pilgrims started. Uh, Huntington, West Virginia up there. 
up there by the big sandy arena. They now call it the Mountain Health, and they used to call it the Big Sandy. Evansville, Indiana, uh, at the Ford Center. Pikeville, Pikeville, Kentucky, at uh, on November sixteenth, and Winston Salem. Uh, November 17th, and then New Orleans, Louisiana, baby. November 24th, the day after Thanksgiving at the UNO Lakefront Arena. And uh, that's mad. for me, that's real magical. That's the first place I ever um, seen like a big concert. And uh, to get to go there and perform, um, yeah, it means a lot, you know. And... Um, yeah, it means a lot, man. I know, and a lot of people there I know are excited about it. And um, on behalf of them, I'm excited as well. It means a lot just to be uh, from uh, that community and that area and to be able to go back there. And um, and I just am grateful for that support there and everywhere. And we had some nice calls that came in. Um, I just got back from Toronto and uh Niagara Falls baby we did it over there and if you haven't been a uh, been to the falls you need to go see it and i was on the canada side and you look i got to my hotel room and i looked out and I, and you see i mean it just is unreal it's just there's so much energy there i mean you see that river and you see that mullet on it baby you say damn that's a waterfall baby that just is, God, you just, yeah, just, I mean, it's just stunning, you know, it's just a stunning, um, it's a stunning place over there, so if you get a chance to check that out, it's worth it, um, and then we spent time over there in Toronto, and, you know, Toronto, I'll say this, man, there's a, there's, it's really friendly, folks, it's, I mean, it's very friendly. And it's very diverse, too. It is, I mean, God, you, they got things you never seen. You know, they got, you know, they got things you never seen over there. You're like, damn, you, you're a, you're, you're a person? It's so, it is mixed, baby. Uh, and, and one thing that's different there is ra the racial... There's not a rate, you don't feel a racial tension, especially between black and white folks there. Now that, of course, you know, I'm white or semi-white, you know, and so that's, that, you know, I can just have my perception, you know, and I grew up in a black and white area, and so there's more history, you know, racial history in the U.S., but in, Can in Canada, it's, that's not, there. it's really different, man. It's the energy when you, when black and white people are around each other, it's really, it feels real clean. It feels like there's not, there's not a bunch of faces from the history. You know, there's not a bunch of like, uh, there's not a bunch of history. You know, it just feels like there's just history of being human. And that to me was, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see. And it's nice to feel that. Uh, so if you want to, it just was real interesting experience, man. Um, because it's different in America. And not everywhere in America, exactly. And not always in America. But I'm just saying kind of on average. And it was, I thought that was pretty spectacular, man. You know. Uh, and... And another thing about Canada, they're not, there's not as many people trying to like, it doesn't feel like it's really safe. I mean, it's safe. Man. You don't feel scared. You feel, you just, even if somebody's mean, if you see a mean person, the worst thing they're going to just going to run up and say, Hey, I'm mean. And then they'll run off, you know, and like, Hey, I'm mean. Sorry. Sorry about being mean, but I still am. And then they'll run off. That's like the word, it's like, I don't know. I think part of it is they don't, there's not people trying to get ahead. There's not as much, like in America, I feel like we're so conditioned that you have to get ahead. 
You have to keep climbing, keep climbing. And in uh, Canada, they're more relaxed. There's not as much of that energy. And so when you're not, when you're not trying to get ahead as much, you're more, you have more energy just to be, you're more happy where you are. You're more happy where you are. If you're not trying to climb, then you get to, you, you have your, your energies there to stand in the group and share with your community. And so I think that's what I feel a lot is a lot more people are content. And man, it's nice to be around. It's nice to witness. It's nice to know that that's possible in a place. Because sometimes, sometimes it doesn't feel as possible here in America anymore to me. And I'm not trying to be a downer. I just, sometimes, you know. But yeah, it was just, it's nice when you're just talking to somebody and that's, they're just trying to be helpful, trying to be friendly, not trying to get ahead or do anything, just trying to be associated with their fellow man or woman. There was something hella warm about that. Um, what else happened? I'm trying to think. So that's all the traveling I've done. You done any traveling recently, Raleigh Mao? Blue Chew, baby. You want to puff up that Frank, homie? It'll do it. Blue Chew. That's right, baby. You want to launch that freaking, you want to launch that Randall, baby. Blue Chew will help you. They'll do it. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but it's in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead and be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And they're chewable, baby. You can suck, you can even, I mean, you can suck, the, you know, you can have it how you want. You can chew it or suck it down. Does it work? Yeah, it does. I'll tell you that. It'll puff up that marlin, homie. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free. When you use our promo code Theo at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W, promo code Theo, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the podcast. Can you believe we did? we've had seven months without football? Can you believe it? God, it hurts. It hurts when you think about it, but the pain is over. It's back. So you can tell your wife that you'll talk to her in February. That's right. NFL is here and DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And they're giving you a can't miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers, all customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Just check the app to see what you get. Download now and use code Theo to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code Theo only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, the crown is yours. What else happened? I'm trying to think. So that's all the traveling I've done. You done any traveling recently, Raleigh Mao? Raleigh. Yes, sir. Have you um, done any traveling recently, brother? Uh, no, I'm, I'm about to. Okay, great. And where are you headed, bud? I'm going to Denver. Oh, okay, buddy. Wow. And how do you do it out to, to, how do, how do, um, I don't know how to say this. How do, are you, do a lot of, uh, how do Asians do at altitude? Uh, I, I think we do, I think we do good. Okay. What are some famous high altitude Asians? Are there any? I'm trying to think of one. 
Because if I think of a mountain, brother, I don't always think of, um, and maybe this is racist. I mean, I don't think of an Asian on a mountain. Is that? Um, yeah, so I looked it up. It says Tibetans and Sherpa are the only two present-day high-altitude East Asian ethnic groups. Tibetans, damn. I thought, I thought, damn, Tibetans. Are you Tibetan? Wow. And those are high altitude Asians, huh? Correct. Gosh, bless them Red Bull drinkers, baby. They're getting up there. And what else has been going on in your life, brother? Um, nothing much. Um, a good friend of mine passed. No. Yeah. Oh, man. But I'm sorry, man. Um, and was it a, uh, was it a male or female? Uh, female. Oh. God, that's wild. Usually, I feel like men die more. I don't feel like I hear a lot about women dying. You know? Oh, I'm sorry, man. Were you able to go to a service or anything? Or what do you guys do for that sort of thing? Yeah, we had a uh, a good uh, celebration of life on Saturday. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. And what kind of do... um <clears throat> And how old was the person, Riley? She was 29. Oh. Was it pretty sad? Was there a lot of singing and stuff? Yeah, yeah, we did a few worship, um, worship songs, mm. songs that they wrote together. Oh. And was there food or not? There was, yeah. Mm. What would they have? They had uh, tacos. Oh, that's interesting. I feel like you don't see a lot of um, talk. You know, a lot of. I, I I feel like you don't see a lot of like kind of tacos when there is uh decease or death, you know? Dang, that's for surprising. Were you surprised at that? Um, not really. She she really liked tacos. Oh man. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, brother. I appreciate you even showing up today, especially knowing that that had occurred, man. And um we're going to check back in with you. I'm happy you're here today, man, and I'm happy that we're able to think about her together and uh and I'm happy that um that uh we're able to sit here and think about her. What was something about her that you liked? Do you know anything that she liked or really enjoyed? Did she have any pets or anything? Um she didn't have any pets, but um mm. she was a photographer. Oh, wow. Wow, man. And now she's being developed up in heaven, I bet, huh? Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. Well, that, I'm sure they really appreciated you going, dude. Um, yeah, I'll check back in with you in a little bit. How does that sound, Riley? Thank you for being here today, my man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Really appreciate the help. Um, you know, we had some people hit the hotline. We were talking last episode about um, getting out of poverty. If you are... Uh, if you are born into poverty or you live in it and you certain ways aren't your way out, how, what are some ways that other people have gotten out of it? You know, cause I think it's important to know. Um, you know, I talked a lot about pressure washing in my neighborhood when I was young, a lot of people would, uh, do pressure washing. And that was something that was pretty popular to get people out of there. And so I want to go to a couple calls right here. You guys hit the hotline. 985-664-9503 and responded uh, with some calls. And so we want to get to those right now um, and see what people had to say. So uh, here we go. Hey, Theo, uh, I, I, loved your, uh, I loved your analysis of getting a pressure washer to, you know, help help get your ass through a hard time when you're young when you're 22 you probably don't know a lot um uh i i am i am that guy i grew up fucking dirt dirt dick poor and uh and i got a pressure washer mm -hmm. and i got a paint sprayer and i i i took a job i would i would say like some 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 really good advice i make a i i i have my own painting business now so I make about a hundred bucks an hour, dude. Nice. 
um, which is fucking amazing to me. Um, I got a pressure washer, 4,200, 4,200 PSI. Whoa, man, you talking that big dog then. You impregnate something with that gun, daddy. You'll impregnate a damn driveway, you know. You could, you could, uh, do DJ Khaled's hair, baby. You could, you'll knock a wig off a thick sister with that. I mean, that's, you talk, I mean, that's, uh, dang. 4,200 PSI, God. You doing drive-by washings? That's high octane, daddy. You know, you could damn castrate a Bichon with that, buddy. Praise God. Maybe let's hear more. Uh, and uh, and I started a paint business, but I also had to learn. I, I learned a lot of shit before that. You know, I did a lot of jobs before that. Always painted kind of on the side. And I didn't know my side business was going to turn into my real business. But that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's what's amazing is you get started in one thing and next thing you know, you're doing another thing, you know? You, uh, you know, you reach into somebody's mouth to fucking steal their gum and next thing you know, bam, bitch, you a dentist. You know, the small things could lead to the big things. All right, that's a nice one. Thank you for that call. We got a couple more that came in here too. Um, let's see what else we got. Hey, Theo. Coming out of the Great Mountains of North Georgia. North Georgia up there, Tacoa and other areas. In Georgia, the mountains of Georgia. That's a great place to um to hide from a uh to hide from knowledge. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but find some people up there that ain't they ain't playing with a full deck of letters, baby, you know? The alphabet, it ain't that long, homie. You find somebody got 14 letters in the alphabet. You say, dang. Come on, onward. So I heard you're talking about ways to make money on the side. You're not too financially shut off in the first place. Been cutting grass for a living since I was 17. It's been pretty successful so far. Started off with a mower and trailer, just charging $40, $50 a cut. Now I have car and trucks. Customers, I'm getting paid up to about 500 a month, about 50 grand a year, and I'm able to pay off an employee. Oh, amen, and that's great. Yeah, once you get going, then you realize, okay, I can hire somebody to do this, and I can start to, you know, uh, scale up, they call it. You know, Gary V calls it that, scaling up, or whatever they call something, I don't know. But, yeah, do somebody yard, boy. Especially these days, people, rich people, you could do all kind of shit to their yard, bro. You know, especially you go to Atlanta, bro. They have they'll have you do all kind of shit to the yard, bro. They'll have you put a finger wave on the finger wave the grass, like what? They'll have you damn French braid right over by the hedges, bro. You say, damn, they they'll, they'll have you put activator on the fucking hedges, bro, over there. You say, hell yeah, boy. Somebody's whole yard looking clean, baby. Damn. So that's what you got to remember that, bro, that, that things are evolving too. So what can you offer? You know, you cutting grass, but you could do grass and more. You know, if you corn row somebody's fucking cornfield, that's on point. You know, dang, that's what I'm talking about. If them bougainvilleas, bro, if them bitches are fucking, they got a uh, French braid. They got them bitches rode up. You know, you got a fade over there on the bougainvilleas. That's what I'm talking about. That high and tight. Or you fucking jerry curl a rose bush. You know, it's just what can you offer for the people? What else we got? Let's hear more, brother. It's kind of funny because I found out tonight my girlfriend's pregnant. I guess that's what prompted me to call you. Hell yeah, dude. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's how, look, if I cut enough grass, bro, somebody getting pregnant. That's on God, homie. That's where I'm from, bro. If, if I do, if, 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 if I do enough yard work, somebody getting pregnant. That's, you know, you know what I'm saying? You keep raking, bro, and suddenly you rake up into some ovaries, bro. And there you are, bro, and y'all in love, bro. 
You got a family, baby. Praise God, man. Congratulations, too, man. Let's hear a little more. I'm not ready for the kid. I know I have a long way to go until I am ready. But it's all about being determined to do better for you, yourself, and those around you. Because that. Well, man, I think you can handle it, brother. You know, you can handle the fir- you know, you handle you handle not knowing what to do with a job and you started. You made a choice for yourself. But don't overwhelm yourself either, man. It don't have to be perfect, bro. You know, and you're going to man, you're going to do a great job. That kid is you. Part of that kid is you. That's what's that's what I think is probably real fascinating about being a parent. And you obviously care about yourself, man. You work and doing things for yourself. So, oh, you can, man, you're going to do so good, man. Oh, uh, bro, I'm happy for you, bro. Um, we actually had one more that came in. Let me hear. Hey, what's up, man? This is Dylan. Um, I'm from New Hampshire, but I live in Denver now. I'm calling about how to get out of poverty. Uh, one of the best ways to do it is door-to-door sales. You live in smart home, selling security, selling pest control. You know, you they'll fly out to pay for your stuff. It's all commissions. So you got to make sure you sell. But if you're tough enough, man, you can make six figures your first year. Wow. I didn't know that, buddy. Door to door sales. Yeah, that's great. Cause dude, some people these days, honestly, I believe if you go to someone's door, okay, and you knock on their door, and when they open it, if you say, look, really honestly, if you give me ten dollars, bro, I'll leave right now. I bet. Six out of probably 15 people will give you 10, at least $8. At least $8, bro, to get out, to leave, bro. Because people are fearful now. So I think that's a way you could get, you know, start stacking a little. Hey, knock, knock, knock. Yes, you know, my name is Terry. And I'm going to be real with you. I don't know what I'm doing, but here I am. And for $10, I will leave immediately. Bam, bitch. I'm Venmo and Terry, bro. Bye, Terry. I'm Venmo and Terry. Gotta go. Sayonara, Terry. Hey, Terry. Uh, goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Terry. Oh, so crazy. Terry is gone. Sorry, that shit gets me uh pretty amped up, man. Let's hear more. No prior experience, you know, and then you learn to sell and you can apply that other places and you get a jump start on your life and do it at any age. So that's my advice for uh, people who don't know what to do. Reach out to those companies, show determination. They'll give you an opportunity to make some money. And the best thing, you can practice this at, uh, you can practice door-to-door sales at Home Depot. If you go back in there by the um, kitchen, you know, by the, uh, appliances and everything, they got a couple doors set up right there. A couple, you know, and you just stand, I would close them, stand there, fucking knock. When somebody answers, try to sell them something. Practice. You could practice right there. They got like, you know, yeah, usually a couple different doors, different color doors and stuff like that. And you could see, yeah, knock, knock. Somebody opened it. They're like, uh, hello? And you're like, hell yeah. You want to buy this wrench set? You know, you want to buy this wrench set. You could get anything out the store and sell it to them. You know, you want to buy this uh, yarn, plant, um, fishing, gear, all types of stuff. You ever done any door-to-door sales, Riley? I have. Really? Wonderful, man. What did you guys sell? Um, Anything from popcorn to seized candy. Oh, wow. And how'd you get involved with that? You So you were doing more, um, is that called, uh, that's not really entrees, that's more side items, huh? Right. Okay. And what, uh, wait, how did you get involved with that? Uh, popcorn was for scouts and seized candy was for band. Ooh, ooh. And what was easier to pedal? Let me, what do you think was easier to pedal out there? What do you mean, like a bike? No, no, no. What what was easier to sell to folks? Oh, um, seize candy. Oh yeah. Why you think? 
Uh, I think everyone just liked candy more than popcorn. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think if you put candy on the word of uh, on the back of anything, it's you know, people are interested in it. You know, you throw any you throw candy on the back of something, people are more excited. You know, like if you say, "Hey, you want to buy this bullshit?" People be like, "Nah, dog." Be like, "Hey, you want to you want to get up on some of this bullshit candy?" People be like, "Let me look at it." You feel me, Riley? I do. That's business, baby. That's big business. Let's hear more, brother. Um, secondly, I have a question for you. I keep getting these these relationships that don't work out, and uh, part of it's my fault. And we're working through that in therapy, but processing the emotions, man. I just keep crying at this realization last week that anytime I really, really want to drink and I'm alone, I typically just need to cry. Mm. So I've been crying constantly, man. And I'm like, God, when is this going to stop? Like, so the question I have is, do I just keep crying it out, or should I, uh, should I just buck up and you know stiff up and lip? Because I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to love myself and get to a place where I can be good to someone else. Anyway, I love you, man, and I look forward to seeing you when you come to Denver. Thank you. Gang, brother, thanks for that, man. Thanks for the call and just for sharing uh, what's going on with you, man. Um... Let me try and drop in here to this. Uh, I think, yeah, tears, you got to let tears out. You know, tears, I believe that tears belong to God. You know, I really believe that. Uh, now, a baby's tears don't. A baby, a baby, a lot of time, baby just being an asshole. And that's how a baby going to be, boy. But, uh, but as an adult, man, tears really, I believe, belong to God and and a lot of times, yeah, you know, there are emotions. They're attached to emotions. And they those emotions, they take a it's hard to get them out of yourself. You know, they go through a gauntlet of like of un, you know, t t it takes a, you know, you'll be surprised when an emotion finally gets to the surface of yourself. So those tears, I feel like they're a lot of times they're the they're sweat, man. They're the sweat of the the gauntlet that your emotions had to run through. This climbing through your soul. That's a that's the that's the sweat of those feelings, man. That's all that is. Those feelings that, that it, it, they you know hard it, it's hard for them sometimes to get out and get out of your body and get out of your brain and get out of your heart. Some of them have to go through your through the past through time. And through your heart, through your brain, through your, and through the part of you that don't even want them to come out then. They got to trick that bit. They got to trick the bouncer a lot of times. And finally they get to the surface. Hell yeah, they going to be sweaty, bro, when those emotions finally get there. So that's sometimes what I see tears as, you know. I, a lot of times there's, it, when you see somebody tear up, they stop it. I and sometimes I understand maybe if you're in a public place and you're feeling uncomfortable or whatever, but man, if you have a chance to let those tears come out, I think it's important because God, God is trying, he wants them out. I believe that. Um, yeah, sometimes he's trying to wash away some old pain or, and now sometimes you might be excited. You get so hopeful, you know, you'll tear up, man. And, and that's, that could be tears that's trying to water some hopes that you might have, you know. You may have such, such, such great hopes. God might be like, hey, you need a couple ounces of water for them, Mitch. He's like, got you, dog. Now, sometimes God might be, you know, you, God might think you thirsty. And he may see him like, hey, this is all I got, bro. And, he, you know, there's salt in it, but hey, you can have a little, you know. And that's weird, bro, if you're just crying just to drink them. That's always, we, we had, you know, we had some dudes in our town, bro. They wasn't doing that, but they was being nasty, boy. They was being nasty, dude. That's one thing. God, when people are being nasty, I don't know. Mm, I don't know how to handle it sometimes. I, 
people, because God, people can be mm -mm, nasty. And they are being nasty sometimes. I remember seeing them do it. God, they was being nasty. How do you feel about that rally man when you you ever seen people being nasty or anything? Um, you know, I just uh just don't you know think about it. What do you do? Just drive off? Yeah. Mm. Mm mm mm. What's going what, yeah, what's new with you, Riley? I feel like, you know, I know we haven't seen each other in a while and I see you got that facial hair going. Maybe you got that catfish rocking, huh, Daddy? I do. How do you feel about that? What what spurned that? Uh, I just wanted to try something new. Mm. And do you feel different with it? Does it feel, how does that feel, you know? Because I rock it, you know? Yeah, no, it feels great. It feels definitely uh, very different. Like how? Like, do you feel, give me five words that makes you feel something, you know, give me some words. I feel older. Okay, older. Grown. Grown, okay. So black and older. Um, I don't know. I look better, maybe. I, mm, that's, hold on. That's a lot of what you get. Don't just do, you just have to do a word. Sorry, but I have to have the rules for the little thing, for the game. You want to think about them? Yeah, I'll think about them. Okay. Oh, man. And are you getting burgers? Are you doing what? For the summertime, the end of the summer barbecues? Are you, do, are you, have, are you doing a barbecue? You having some people over? Think, think, think. Well, if you's having burgers, if you's having franks, or if you got some vegan over there and they want you to grill up a mushroom for them, well, I'll tell you this, picking up burgers and hot dogs or whatever you're doing, you can save money with Ibotta. That's right. You can get cash back. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt. After you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. That's right. Get cash back right now with Ibotta. And Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Theo when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app. That's I-B-O-T-T-A. The free Ibotta app and use code Theo. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code Theo. If you like auto racing and you are into that gasoline and rubber and damn just sunburn and stuff like that. Morgan & Morgan has teamed up with Richard Childress Racing to support Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon and are offering one of you this past weekend listeners the opportunity to attend a race day in Las Vegas on October 15th. Oh, that's awesome. They are giving one lucky winner $2,000 and two tickets to see Kyle Busch race live in Las Vegas this October uh, entering to win is easy. Just go to morganvegas.com slash this past weekend. That's morganvegas.com slash this past weekend. No purchase necessary. Open a legal residence of the 48 contig contiguous United States and D.C. who are 18 and over. Sweepstakes ends 10-1-2023. For entry and official rules, visit morganvegas.sweep P, that's S W E E P P E A dot com. As well, if you're ever injured, I want you to know that you can call Morgan and Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash this past weekend or dial pound law. That's pound five two nine from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement. 
All right, we got a call that came in right here uh, from one of these gator babies right here. And these, these men have been dealing with prehistoria. And prehistoria, let me tell you what it is. It's before, um, before it was like trial basis when God was trying out animals. This is way before uh, like a, um, a deer or a uh, golden retriever. This is back when God had like brontosaurus. You know, he was just, he was putting shit together. He didn't even know. You had brontosaurus had like a 90 yard neck. Like, damn, what? He would eat, but it never made it to his stomach and they would die every time. They would die every time. Dude have a huge meal and then you couldn't get, the food couldn't get there and he died. You know, he just, and then they had triceratops, them things. 400 pound forehead, bro. Set like 70 pound body. So them bitches, the second they was they was born, they took one step forward and just, shoop, and now every one of them died face down in the dirt. T-Rex, he couldn't do shit. All he could do is bite people. All he could do is bite people, man. You know, like a little pervert at a fucking mall, bro. You know, they couldn't. He, he had them little arms. He had them baby reachers. He couldn't even fucking hug his buddy. Think about that. No wonder he's so angry. He can't even fucking hug. And so that's some of the early animals God made. And that's prehistoria. Now, some of those animals are still lurking around. Some of those animals still milling around in our world. And I want to talk to a man who captured one of them down there in uh, Mississippi over there. And they just captured a 800 pound uh, alligator. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine your wife thinks you're cheating on her and you show up and you've just, your arms, you've got lacerations all over. Um, yeah, let's get to the call. Uh, Joey Clark, I believe is the man. Joey. Hey, what's going on, Theo? How you doing, man? What's up, boss? I see you got that old Miss shirt on for yourself. Yes, indeed, man. If I'm coming on a, uh, an LSU boys, uh, podcast i gotta gotta represent right we'll call it a truce for a little while baby how about that man <laughs> there I'm, you go for about three or four weeks and it's back on That's okay right. deal man i'm turning into, into a ut fan too here in uh in tennessee um joey tell me about this gator baby you guys caught that gator huh yeah man um this uh went with three of my buddies out there uh we were in we're outside of yazoo city and um oh yeah that's we, where yeah. um uh, Jerry Clowers from Yazoo City, Mississippi. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, went out there in Yazoo City, and we've been to this spot, you know, over the years. I I think this is probably the fourth or fifth gator I've caught with these guys, something like that. Um, so we've we've been to that spot several times, and, and y'all are gator this, buddies, this, huh? That's right. That's right. I've been with these fellows a few times, and and they've been several years without me as well. Um, and so you get out there, you guys get out there, you're in a, what kind of vessel are you guys in? Not a submarine a or anything, huh? No, we're in a, we're in a 14 foot John boat. Dang the, uh, boy. I know. We brought this thing in the, uh, foot. Bro, that's some Tom Sawyer water work <laughs> right there, buddy. That's right. That's right. That, that, that gator was about a, about a foot hanging off of that boat while we were trying to get back in at night. And so what do you hook him on? What, when you are, are you aiming for this type of big gator? Are you aiming? What are you trying to catch? Are you guys looking for flounder? What are you guys trying to catch out there? Yeah. When you're out there, you're, I mean, in this area, we've, we've hooked up and caught, you know, several, you know, 12, 12 and a half foot gators out there. Mm -hmm. And that's what really what we're looking for. You know, we don't, you know, in Mississippi, the cool thing about here is it's not like Louisiana. It's not commercial. They only give out about 900 tags a year. So we got drawn in a lottery. So you want to make it count, right? You want to make your gator count. You don't want to come in there with a little nine foot gator if you don't have to, but uh, you know, nothing against that. Just we've, we've done that before. Right. So, so we, yeah, it's probably we, embarrassing. I guess if four men get out of a boat with a little baby gator, that looks probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've, uh, that's you know, casual looking. We, we saw this gator uh, just as we were putting in right before dark and we had no idea it was this big. So we, we hopped in the boat, went out there, and um, you know, we must have passed 
20 to 25, 30 gators on the way out there. God. And they all look great. And, and it's just a swamp full of alligators out there. But And how do you, can you tell, like, because the eyes are usually poking out of the water. Can you tell how big a gator is even just by its eyes poking out? You can tell, even when you get, you know, you're far away from one, you can tell if he's undersized and he's something you don't want to fool with. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you're out there at night. It's it's pitch black. There's They got to pump sunshine in out there to that part of the part of the state and you know you're out there in that in that stuff and you got a q beam and uh you're just trying to light those eyes up and 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 go from there and does the beam shock the gator at all does it kind of get like a um like a does it does it have that deer in headlights effect on a gator or what is that like it's not too much going to shock him when he's when he feels the vibrations in the water of your of your boat and your trolling motor and all that that's what's going to make him kind of kind of duck and start trying to get away from you and and you know he held his breath. It seemed like thirty to forty-five minutes at a time, a couple times, and oh, wow. we just had to keep on searching him. And um, you know, we hooked up to him the first time. And what are you My hooking him on? Jay. Are you hooking yeah, him on so, a spinner bait? What do you got? I mean, what do you even put yep. out there? Yep. So it's just a treble hook. What are you guys using? Are you guys using chicken livers? Like, what do you use? It. What's yeah. the bait? No, there's no bait whatsoever. That's, oh, there's that's no the bait. Part. No bait whatsoever. You're out there. You know, you've got to see this gator, mm-hmm. and then you've got to be talented enough to be able to throw a uh, to, uh, just to throw that treble hook, throw that line right where you want to do it. Okay, and so you're not so there's, so there's no bait in there, there. There's you're not trying to get them to get something like a fish, or nope. it is more you are just trying to get the hook into his body. That's right. That's okay. right. You're trying to get the hook in his body, and you know, eventually we we kept on trying to hit him with one one line at a time, and mm-hmm. we did that. But he kept breaking off. And what these gators do, um, we must have we we probably hooked up on him seven or eight times, I guess. And he kept on, you know, shaking that that treble hook out of him. Mm-hmm. But what they're trying to do is go under logs and things like that and and shake that tra- that that hook out of them, mm-hmm. and then they're free. Um, and so yeah. that's that's kind of what the the gist is there. And do they seem nasty? Like, did this gator seem like a nasty guy, or what did he see? Like, can you get any a semblance of what their personality is like? Did he seem like a nasty guy? Yeah, man, he was, uh, he wasn't the meanest gator we've ever run across. We've, we've run across some meaner ones, but he was very territorial. You know, he, he, Mm. the, you know, the weird thing is we've hooked up on some good sized gators in the past and, you know, you hook them once or twice and now they kind of get the gist of what's going on. You're trying to kill them Mm. and they disappear. You'll never see them again. But this gator, he wouldn't do that. Mm. Uh, he was there in that area. You know, he's just, uh, he's probably a hoarder. Have you seen that show? Like my 700 pound life or something that, cause that, those people own not, you know, they're usually locked in their house with magazine. You know, they have like stacks of magazines and everything. That's right. That's Flavor right. This thing is whatever. over there. And yeah, he's in his spot and he's not trying to get out of there. He's uh, he's doing his thing. And uh, like I say, he never left. He never left the 200 yard radius for us. And, and that's just crazy to me that it happened like that because we hooked into it for the first time about 930 at night. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have that thing in the boat until 330 in the morning. My God. And so you hook him, you start getting him. Now, how close is the boat? At, at, are you just right next to him? Yeah, you are. So, you know, we, I'd say when you hook up on him initially, you know, you're probably within 15 feet of the gator, probably. So damn, he's coming right up bro, there. I wouldn't be there, buddy. Yeah, I'd dude, call a damn I'll, I'll be, Uber, buddy. I would not be right there. <laughs> I'll be glad to send you a couple of little videos we took on the boat so you can kind of see for yourself on this. Uh, if that'd be something that would that would help kind of put it together for you. We'd love but that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play some of those side by side while we're talking about it. Okay, so yeah. you get him, you you have how many hooks do you eventually get into the gator? Finally at the end, we did get a second hook in him. We had one, the first hook we caught, which is not where you want to catch him, mm-hmm. would be uh back at the tail. And that's that's where my buddy Don, he he blind cast out over him, hooked him in the tail. We fought him for about another 30 minutes so we could get a second hook in him. Damn. Uh. You know, and so kind of my job with all this is when I'm in the boat, you know, we've got a snare or whatever. And my job is once he's come up for and water. what do you mean a snare? Tired. Yeah, so it's like, like a, a drum? Um, no, nah, not a drum. It's uh, it's kind of like a, I, I'd call it almost like a noose, right? I mean, it's you, it, you, you've got a rope on the end of it. You slip it over his head. And then when you do it, I just pull that rope as hard as I can mm, and basically mm. try to sit down on the bottom of the boat until, yeah. uh, so this is some damn BDSM shit. It sounds like, kind of. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Wow. Uh, there's, it's so it's so, crazy. We wound up, it got him at 14 feet 
uh, three inches. So it, it as of today, we've got still got 24 hours left in the state of Mississippi for gator hunting season. But as of today, it's the state record. Wow. So, uh, and how much weight was it? 802.5 pounds. Damn, boy. And that missed that missed the uh, state record by 20 pounds. So that just tells you how big they are down here. Oh, so it didn't even make the weight record, but it made the length record. That's right. That's exactly right. That's incredible, man. It and is. It is. So once you have both of those hooks, how are you elevating it out of the water? What's like, how does your boat not capsize? Yeah. So, you know, what he's doing when he's down there underwater, he's, he's, you know, he's fighting and he's down there and he's been down there. The, you know, at this point, you know, over that seven hour period, he had been in that water, uh, you know, underwater the majority of that mm-hmm. time. But they got to come up for air, right? They got to, they, at some point, they can't stay underwater forever. They got to come up. So when they do, you got to think about it as you're, you know, these guys with the two lines are pulling him closer and closer to the boat um, as they continue to fight him. And he continues to come up for air a little bit more frequently towards the end. Mm. And that's, you know, when it gets close enough to the boat within, you know, I'd say two or three feet if you can. And that's when you want to put that that snare around him and, and, and hook him from there and kind of finish the deal off. And do you choke him out? Does somebody get on him? How do you finish him? Man, I'm trying like hell to choke him out. I'm like, I'm just holding him as tight as I can until somebody can shoot him. Oh, you shoot him? Gator, yeah, yeah, you got to shoot him. Oh, it's kinda, damn, yeah, you bro, shoot this him is a the, damn. Uh, that's right. Bro, this is a that's damn right. robbery, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a mugging for sure. It is. God, damn, so, I thought dude, y'all were just towing him in. <laughs> No, 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 no. You got to put that oh, bad boy Christ. in the boat. The last thing you want to do is tow him in and, and then you lose him or something. Yeah. Because once, if he were to break off a rope or something, mm-hmm. he's at the bottom of the river. You're not getting him back, you know. And when he, when, after he's, right when he dies, do y'all hug or what do people like? Is there a celebration? What is that moment like? Man, it's just a sense of relief. You've been out there with him all night long. And, and the last thing you want to do is let him off the hook. Look, we had been out there for so long. We, we were all just getting tired and worn out. We'd been oh, at work yeah. all day, all four of us, just, you know, doing our thing. And nobody wanted to give up. And then we all thought about it. But at the end of the night, you know, my buddy Tanner, the entire time, uh, he was like, we're not letting this gator go. We're just not going to do it. So he was, he was hell bent on getting this gator in the boat. Oh, every tanner I know will get hell bent. They get hell bent on all kind of shit. You put a couple beers in them. Were you guys having a couple beers? No, there's no drinking out there. There's no drinking. It's a little bit too unsafe oh, for that. God. We we tried to be as legal as we could with getting this gator in and out. And thank God we did because now, you know, I mean, immediately when we pulled it out, obviously the state wildlife department gets called. They got to come measure it and confirm it. And but no, no party. And the party was after, I guess, uh, the, you know, over the, over the last 10 days, just trying to, uh, let all this stuff sink in, man. It's it's grown and blown up beyond our wildest expectations, man. Man, that's exciting, brother. Yeah. And do y'all name him or anything? Is there any uh is there anything like that? Do y'all bury him? What's the what happens? Is there anything that happened like that? No, so we don't I don't we haven't named him. I wish we would have. I wish you kind of brought something up. Maybe we should do that. Um, but the uh, with the meat, we donated the meat to a uh, to an organization there in Yazoo City. They kind of just you know divvy that meat out um, to you know orphans, families probably. and things like that. Yeah, and it came out to like three hundred and eighty pounds of meat, so it was a yeah, ton of damn. meat on that. And then yeah, the I remember leather- they had an orphanage by us, and they would always, whenever people would cut uh, that, a lot of donated meat would go over there. And sometimes I had a buddy that was over there, and we'd go over there and eat, and they'd always be eating gator up in that bitch. It's kind of wild oh, to yeah. think, oh, it's crazy. You go in there and you see twenty freaking orphans, bro. <laughs> no, I don't. Yumming, da- yumming down on some gator. It's just like that's damn. it, man. Get them some gator sausage and then let them have a weekend. You know? That's- oh yeah, if they don't have parents, dude, get them some decent meat. That's what I think. Everybody deserves something. <laughs> Exactly. But yeah, man, it uh, that that was, you know, kind of the gist of the of the gator itself. And um, you know, I, I guess with this hide, we're gonna get some leather boots made. We're gonna be looking sharp come uh come Christmas time, I guess. We'll see what's up. But uh, that's the plan. Well, praise, brother. Thank you so much for just jumping on and, and filling us in on some information. It's really fascinating and congratulations on the state record, man. That's amazing. Well, I appreciate it, man. It's very nice talking to you and uh like I say, this has been a wild ride and um I'll send you those videos so you can check that out and, and kind of see, put this into perspective, what it's like out there in the pitch black at night. Oof, yeah, brother, please do. Also, just great to talk to somebody um, from over there near Yazoo City, Mississippi, the home of Jerry Clower, my favorite comedian. So uh, thank you so much, Joey Clark. We appreciate you, brother. 
Thank you, man. Nice talking to you. All right. Cheers, buddy. Have a good one. Take care. What else? Riley, I'm sure people are going to want to know. We usually get an update on how your dating life is going. What's going on there, bub? Uh, still, still nothing. Really? Really? Okay, yeah. that's okay. Well, damn, dude. And, and, and how's everything going? I know we talked in the past about the masturbatory efforts and stuff. You've been out there glazing that glizzy, homie. What's been going on? You've been freaking burping that little pants yurt or what? Um, you've been frisbeeing that little syrup dog or what? Uh, still nothing. Oh, man, you tell Riley Mal, people are not believing this, man, that you've never, you still have never ejaculated. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Gosh, never brother, we got to get you on a damn pay-per-view. I mean, you could open up for Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis. You could be in an early preliminary. I mean, there's never in your life. You telling me the truth, Riley? I am. Never, not even in your sleep. God has never come and touched you in your sleep. Never. What? Oh, my God. We could raffle you off to a bunch of older gay men in Hollywood. They, bro, they pay half a million dollars for you in Hollywood to be getting clean sauce out of a damn Vietnamese fella from the mountains. Yeah, um, I'm I'm actually not Vietnamese. Well, but yeah, but you know what I'm, or what are you? I'm uh, Japanese, Korean, Hawaiian, and Norwegian. Well, you know, that's pretty much Vietnamese, dude. But that doesn't matter, man. What matters is we're both human beings, baby boy. And I can't believe, boy, you got that clean syrup in you, son. You got that 6,000 octane, boy. Gosh, that's God's gleek, homie. You, that thing coming right off the clouds of the Lord. My God. Dude, if you, you, if you got you a little, if you got you a half ounce of that and you uh, painted the toes of some of these gay men and perverted men out there in Hollywood, my God. Oh, but I'm sorry. That's not what we need to be doing. That's not what we need to be involved in, man. I'm sorry for saying that stuff. Oh, you're good. You know, but are, do you worry about not being able to get an erection when you do get a woman, Riley? When you, cause are you now you're saving yourself for marriage. That's correct. Correct. But how do you know you're, that your body's going to work then? Uh, I, I just believe it will when the time comes. Dang boy. Wow, bro. That is a risk, though, Riley. Look, I, but you know what, man? I've seen miracles happen, man. I really have. I've seen miracles happen, bro. And if you, look, I would stand by y'all's bed and pray for y'all. Pray, you know, by y'all's marital bed or whatever. Be in the next room and, you know, put my hands on the wall and pray or whatever you needed, buddy. You know? Yeah, yeah. All right. You sound exhausted, man. Are you tired? Eh, a little. Yeah, it's just been a lot. Sorry, I keep I, I keep forgetting. Um, I don't forget that that's that you just came from a funeral, man. I'm sorry, I, and I'm sorry for maybe for asking about some of this, but uh, you know, I just want to know what's going on, and and I, maybe we can help you find somebody, Riley. Like, um, you know, we'll put um, we'll put some clips over there on the uh this past week in social media and see if. And um, you know, maybe you'll you'll meet a girl. You need a, you want a God fearing woman, correct? I do. Amen, brother. And does it matter what uh ethnicity they are, religious ethnicity? Uh ethnicity, no. Okay. Oh, I mean like Protestant or whatever. Um no, just non denominational. Okay, non dom huh? Damn, okay, you getting risky, boy. You hitting that raffle, boy. Non denominational, baby. That's the devil's raffle, baby. All right. What else do we have here? Um, is Arthur on the line, Riley? Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I want to uh, I want to deal with a little bit of laundry now. Just a uh, some kind of behind the scenes stuff, really. Um, you know, you guys, we had an issue in the past where uh, Kai the hitchhiker 
and he's a famed um he uh you know he uh smashed smash smashed somebody at an intersection with a hammer and he was that hammer baby you know he's that freelance construction worker and he um he was like a national celebrity and he and then he did um murder he did a few murders and so anyway uh that was a famed clip somebody took my face and put it on his clip and it made the rounds on social media and it was you know funny and crazy i can't believe that somebody made it um but then at a certain point uh he filed a lawsuit against me uh, against me and said that i was using his footage and his um uh, like name and like, I, I don't know, just his using him. Um, and so we reached out to, uh, Morgan and Morgan, uh, who's a, who's a sponsor of the podcast. And, uh, my buddy Dan Morgan is, um, one of the Morgans over there. And, uh, and so they've been handling that case for us and I thought it was over with, but apparently it's not, uh, we're still getting stuff in the mail. And, um, and so that I, I want to check in right now. Uh, we have, is he on? We have Arthur Petrosian. That's right. Hey, Theo. Hey, Arthur. How are you today? Good, brother. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, man, except, uh, you know, I keep getting hammered by this case, man. This guy, he's uh, he's resilient, isn't he? Guy is definitely persistent. Um, he's he's unfortunately been able to dance around some of these procedural issues in federal court, keeping the case alive. Um, the court still has not heard the case on its merits. Wow. So we're confident that once they hear the case, uh, they're ultimately going to dismiss it out. And how many, like, ha has he filed? Because, yeah, I've got, I keep getting paperwork and a lot of handwritten stuff. And how many, like, how many things has he filed at this point? Multiple motions, uh, multiple wow. amended complaints. Um, you know, it, it's fun to read, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every time I come into the office <laughs> and I get a handwritten note from Kai uh, from his jail cell, I open it immediately. I can't wait to read it. I actually have a document that he filed with the court. So this is an official document that he filed in federal court. And, and this is all public record. Yeah. So anytime you file a document in federal court, anybody that has an account can go in and, and look at this. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think this paragraph gives you a glimpse of what this case is all about and what he's been doing. Um, and if you'd like, I'll, I'll read it. It's actually kind of funny. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, so, let's get it. So, so this is Thank Kai you. and his moving papers. He says, plaintiff is writing this at 530 in the morning in a sweltering hot cell in a stone building without air conditioning that heats up during the day and holds the heat throughout the night. Mm. He's using a floppy shank proof pen. He typed this at the li law library, but he only gets five hours once a week if he's granted extended access mm. and his access just ran out. And then it goes on to say, even now a plaintiff has to wake up at 3.30 in the morning get his work on this opposition done before 11 a.m. or else the sweat soaked document would be unacceptable for filing. Wow. Defendant, and that's you, in contradistinction, and these are his words, mm -hmm. has began, has been making comedy videos in an air conditioned studio, making a show in the most literal sense of slacking off, enjoying himself instead of filing a responsive pleading. The court can see for themselves that during the time in question, defendant was having the time of his life. Mm. Well, so, you know, it's it's going nowhere. It, it's just things like this that he continues to file again there. The court, in order to provide him with due process, is kind of entertaining him at this point. OK, um, but we strongly believe that within the next 60 to 90 days, when the court actually hears the merits of the case, and actually reviews our motion to dismiss that they're going to grant it. So will we have to go to court, do you think? I would. Uh, you don't have to, but I will definitely wow. be there representing you. Thank you. Um, First of all, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe it. Glad to be here. Glad crazy. we could help. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for you guys helping, man. God, I mean, it's just so. And so I guess if somebody's in in jail, they still have the right. They can still sue somebody. They can still, even if they did murder, they can still you don't lose those rights. 
You know, absolutely. And, and this was this is what this case is about. And that's why we've been kind of sitting on the sidelines for about six to eight months is because the federal court wants to make sure that they provide Kai his due process rights mm. and they hear him out. Uh, again, eventually this case gets dismissed. But for now, we're going through the motions and, and making sure that the court hears him out. Wow. And, and do you guys get a lot of a lot of cases like this? You know, we don't handle a lot of cases like this, but we pride ourselves in in fighting for the people, and we consider you a good friend, Theo. So uh, we've, we're all hands on deck on this case. We've got multiple people pushing it. Uh, we've got experts lined up as well, too, Dang. just to make sure that you're going to be protected from every angle. So, you know, it's it's kind of an exciting case. It provides some comic uh, value for us, yeah. uh, just because <laughs> it's, it's different than a lot of the other cases, but... Yeah, I, I'd almost wish, I almost wish, well, well, first of all, thank you guys so much, man. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, uh, Dan, you know, Dan Morgan is a, is a nice guy and we have a lot of mutual friends and, and, um, and thank you guys too for, for supporting the podcast. And I know you guys mostly handle like personal injury, that type of stuff. That's right. Right. Yeah. But it would almost be crazy. What if we got to go do like a deposition or something? That would be wild, <laughs> wouldn't it? That would be wild. It would be very entertaining. Um, we would probably have to take it in jail in Kai's cell, probably. Yeah. I, I don't know if he'll get extended hours to go to the law library to do his deposition from there. <laughs> but that would be exciting, exciting to do. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it, man. Thanks for like in, at least recognizing that uh, this is kind of entertaining along the way. I'm sure it is a little bit different than normal. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 he's definitely kind of a, no, a notorious figure, so... Yeah. Um, well, we're excited to back you up. If there's anything else you need, you let us know. Thank you. Hopefully, hopefully I will not, but I appreciate that. <laughs> you got it, man. All right. Have you a good day, brother. Care. You too. Wow. So that's interesting. You know, that's, uh, but you know, I'm grateful that, you know, if people, if you, that you don't lose all your rights, you know, I mean, what a, what a fortunate country where you can do a murder and still go and have rights. I mean, that is, you don't get, some places you don't even get that, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of countries where you don't get that, where if you do a murder, that's it. You know, they're like, hey, buddy, you do, you do, you do the murder, then you, that's all you do in. Um, sticking in the legal, in the legal space, I want to talk about uh, something that has been tough for it's I want to talk about something. Um, we, our podcast was defrauded. We were stolen from, um, we were taken advantage of a lot of ways to say it. Uh, the company that did it is cast media and the man that did it is Colin Thompson. And I'm going to put his picture in here. Um, and, uh, it's, I don't know exactly how to say this. I'm going to do my best. Um, I, we're part of a larger group of podcasts that were uh, stolen from, right? We were part, the in, in total, I've, just between talking with folks, there's up to $4 million that I know of that people were taking advantage of. Uh, we're in the six figures. I know of podcasts that are in the seven figures. Um, and Colin Thompson, that's his name. I want to say his name so you know it. Uh, people get taken advantage of a lot in business and, 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 and businesses use tactics and stuff to hide, to hide themselves. And, uh, you know, they'll use bankruptcy or the threat of this or that. And, and, um, and, and he may get my money. That's okay. You know, I, I'm fortunate that I can still have touring and that I, uh, can take care of myself, but you fuck with the wrong rat, Colin. I'll tell you that brother. And, uh, and I'll just tell you guys what happened. Um, we had a deal with this company, right? And, and it was started off good. And then it started to get where we were getting less of our payments. And we were reading the ads. We do the ads. You know, we read them out loud. And, we, and, and you guys support some of them. And thank you. Um, and then it got to be where we were getting paid less of the payment we were owed. And they sell all the ads a year in advance. So you're kind of stuck into the year right? And the advertisers were paying Colin Thompson and cast media and they weren't paying us. They would pay us a little bit and they had a reason why. And 
So and one of the craziest parts was like, there was like, we kept asking, you know, Hey, we have to get paid, man. We have to get, and we weren't getting paid. And so finally I was able to make a new deal, um, and just cut ties completely. I made sure that everything, you know, they breached our contract. And so I was able to cut ties and then they come along, Colin Thompson comes along and he joins, there's a new company that has a stock that's going live soon, right? Or it's coming out or something. This company called Podcast One or Live One, right? I, he, they, they get me on a call uh, with, I think the guy's name, Rob Ellen. Yeah, that's the guy's name, Rob Ellen. Um, and his brother is Doug Ellen, who's like a screenwriter, and I think he did. His brother was pretty successful. Um, but they get me on a call with this guy, Rob Ellen, right? And, and they tell me, um, they tell me that if you come over to our new network, over to this new network, podcast one, that we'll pay you some of what you're owed in stock, right? But the stock hasn't gone public. So they're trying to, it, it felt like to me, they're trying to leverage our podcast and other podcasts to then make their stock do well. Um, and then if that happens, then we'll get a share of our money, right? Like it just, the whole thing to me felt really uh, seedy. And the worst part to me was I said, well, what about Colin Thompson? I said, that guy's a crook. And they said, he's going to be, um, he'll be, they said, we felt like he's done a good job and that he would be part of the team still. So how, that's just, I know some of this is a lot of insider baseball, man, but to me it was just fucking just, it felt real dirty and it felt like, um, just no respect for podcasting, no respect for the work that we had done. Um, you know, to get paid by the advertisers and then not pay us. And then uh, for Colin to lead us in this direction to say, well, if you join this other group before their stock goes out, that uh, that then we'll pay you in some of the stock. But part of that will be based on if we're there for it to do well. I don't, I don't know, man, but I know what it feels like to be taken advantage of. Uh, and I wouldn't do that to these people. I wouldn't do that to Colin Thompson. I wouldn't do that to Cast Media. And um, and so I say this just because I don't want this guy taking advantage of anybody else. A lot of times in business practices, especially in like um, entertainment stuff, a lot of people are able to snake away and they're able to slip through and use tactics and uh, shell games and bullshit. Um, but you fucked with the wrong rat, homie. I have a voice. And a lot of other people are forced into these bad deals because they don't, they're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to speak up, man. And uh, that's not what our show is about. And um, yeah, I just want you guys to know that this is the man. We put his picture up on the thing, on the YouTube. And the amount of money that I, from, from other people, podcasters, they've said is over $4 million. Um. And, um, yeah, it's just, the shit's fucking wrong. And I don't also understand how a company expects me to come, wanted me to come over there to boot what felt like to me, they were using me to boost their stock price. And I don't say that out of ego, but we've done well. And that they get all these podcasts saying, well, that'll boost our stock price. Then we'll go public with the stock. And then based again on their backs, the stop, there'll be, there'll be money there. So it was like, it felt like y'all going to try to fuck me twice, homie. Well, no, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can keep that money. Um, you can't keep it. We'll see how it plays out. But if you do end up keeping it, man, you must've needed it. You must've needed it. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't make me stoked, but, um, but you can't get me to shut up, man. You can't get me to shut up. And uh, if that's the cost of it, 
and for me to say my fucking piece. You know how many other podcasters wanted to say this shit right now but can't say it? So, anyway. Um, yeah. That's who I just want you to know. I want you to know about Colin Thompson. I want you to know where I've heard he's going to be working at. And I want you to know that he is a crook. And to me, it's criminal. Um, but it, the, the, the way that people are able to cheat and lie and, and manipulate the system, um, you know, he went and got Neil Sacker, who worked with Harvey Weinstein, to jump on the calls. I mean, he just, I don't, fuck, it's just fucking kind of sad, man. And Yeah, but I just wanted to speak up for myself, man. I've waited a year to speak up for myself. You know, he, he, they put us through so much bullshit. And I don't know if there's other people over there that did it too. And maybe we'll get more information. I don't know. Or this may be all you ever hear about it, you know? Um, and so I didn't really know how to, the best way to do this. But um, yeah, I wouldn't do that to somebody. And he, they, they, they did, man, they did it to, I mean, some of these people's podcasts this is all they had, man. And these motherfuckers did that, bro. So. I'm sorry about that, um, and I'm sorry for them, and yeah, I'm just happy to have a voice for myself, and that's one thing that we built here that, that he had nothing to do with. He had nothing to do with. In fact, he stole on our backs once, and I'm not letting these people do it to me two times. So for anybody that had to take that, that sucker deal over there, uh, this vo I'm speaking on behalf, uh, for all of us, man, because um, I know that some of you guys have said to me that you wanted to say some of these same things, and I don't mean that out of ego. I just mean that, um, I don't know. I feel, uh, you know, I don't know. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't have said that part. I don't want to speak on behalf of those people. But, um, yeah, I just wouldn't have done that to somebody. And uh, I'm happy to be able to speak for myself. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful to you guys, to the listeners, that we have this place here. Um, and that this is what we try to do. And I'm sorry I've been making this about me this past five or six minutes or whatever, but um, but I, this was the only public place I could do this where I feel like it would have some effect because to me this guy is like the Bernie Madoff of podcasting. And, uh, and that almost glorifies him in a weird way, but um, I wanted to be able to say that. Sorry, I'm just rambling, but uh, I, I wanted to be able to speak my piece. Thank you. Um, with that said, man, let's get back into something here. Um, I want to say this, you know, I just saw, I saw on Twitter where Max Holloway, who is from Maui was sharing about how, uh, a donation that was made to the Maui food bank and then Dustin Hollow, Dustin Poirier, uh, and the good fight foundation, uh, matched their efforts, a $10,000 match. And on behalf of this past weekend, uh, we want to do the same thing. I know there's a lot of listeners out there who think like, well, how can I help and what can I do? And so I'll, um, so we're going to do that together here. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to match that 10,000. Um, there's some charities also that Kelly Slater shared about the surf man. And so we'll see, uh, but we want to, we're going to match that $10,000 from Maui. Um, and that's this past weekend. That's us doing that. So if you're a listener and today you're feeling like I wanted to do something for the people of Maui, uh, we, you just did. And we did that. Um, and yeah, sorry. I hope that doesn't sound egotistical. Sorry, man. My brain's a little all over the place from sharing some of that. Uh, you know, I think when I get taken advantage of it, it attaches it to like old feelings of shit. And, um, yeah, it makes me feel, uh, it makes me feel, it attaches to old feelings of like that I don't have any worth or something. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, all right. What else can we do? Anything else you want to say, Riley? Um, you know, just that. You know, I'm glad that my family is safe. Um, my I have some family out in Maui, um, some cousins out there that mm. they're both firefighters, and you know, I'm wow. just glad everyone's safe. Really, huh? Firefighters. So were they? Did, were they? They they must have been involved, huh? Yes, uh, they all lost their homes. Oh man. 
Man, the world, the sometimes there's just so much going on. It feels just, it feels just really, it feels like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry that that happened for them. And, you know, that, that, that community over there, God, there is nothing more special if you get to witness it in your life um, than some of the connectivity of some of that community over there and uh, Maui, the other islands as well. Um, there, it's just something really, really special, you know, uh, so our thoughts are still with them, man, and yeah, I'm sorry that that happened, but thank you for letting us know that, Riley, let you know, let us know a little bit more about you, you know, and that's important, and if we ever get that boner to launch, homie, we might have to get a couple firemen to put that thing out, boy, whoo, boy, we gonna get that branch to burn, you know, we gonna get you out there just syruping that little hammer, baby. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys, man, for being a part of this episode, and, um, yeah, it just, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, um, you ever feel like that, Riley? I do. Yeah, where do you think it comes from, man, or what do you think about it? Um, yeah, you know, it just, you don't, you know, you don't always have to be perfect. Yeah, because we can't be, right? Right. Yeah. So it's a fool's errand, isn't it? Yeah. Man. But it, what, it almost feels like we, like we should be, though, or we need to be. Does, does it ever feel like that to you? Sometimes, yeah. And what do you do then when, you, when it happens? Uh, I just think again that I'm, you know, I don't have to be perfect. That checks out, man. That checks out. Um, yeah. We don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. I mean, you are. You're You're fine. Uh, so, yeah, praise, baby. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the love and support. And just, um, yeah, I just, I can't. I feel like I just say thank you over and over again. Uh, but... Hoping to make the most of this week, man. Hoping to hide from this summit. I think this one last week is flaring up. And then we could do what, you know, we could see what winter's thinking about. So, um, you guys be good to yourselves, baby. You deserve it. And you too, Riley, okay? Thank you, Theo. Yeah. You bet, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for being here. I ain't seen home in about a hundred days. I can almost hear mama pray. For my restless soul And I ain't made a dollar I ain't spent But where it's going ain't killed me yet I still get where I'm bound to go I'm making it I'm making wrong